Christian talk with a Caribbean twist. Iron sharpens iron, with Linda Casimir and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Iron Shopping. Iron, this is Linda Casimir and friends. Tonight we are going to start off, of course, in prayer. And then we're going to, I'm going to uh, pass the mic on to one of our panelists that has a, um, wants to tell the viewers, the viewing audience about um, a situation that she experienced this week. So that's going to be our jumping off point. So uh, whenever you are ready to open up with a word of prayer, go right ahead. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you so much for seeing us through another week. We thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We glorify you and give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in everything that we do, oh God. We ask, Father God, that tonight that we decrease, that you may increase, Father God, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Father God. We ask, Father God, that the words that are spoken tonight, Father God, be used to glorify and edify the body of Christ, Lord. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch each and every person listening, Father God. We ask that your word, Father God, would penetrate every heart and every soul, Father God. So in different ways and just right where each person needs to be touched, Lord. To you be all the glory and all the honor. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We take off every barrier, Father God. We take off all of that off of this conversation, Lord. And we just say, have your way, Father God. We won't box you in. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, so now we're going to hand the mic over to our second panelist, who is going to give us a testimony of her week. Monica, you ready? Go ahead. Yes. Good evening to my brothers and sisters. I just want to let you guys know how good God is. And sometimes in life, we have the trials and tribulations. This week was one of those for me. It started off with me losing my car because of a record company damaged my car and don't want to pay for it and pretending like they don't know what happened and giving me the run around that had my anger just building up and everything throughout the day was just, uh, the week was just building up, building up, building up. And then Friday, yesterday, was my um, grandson's birthday party. I was going to attend with um, to my grandson's birthday party. I was catching a ride with my daughters and I was sitting in the back of the, the car. And sometimes it's like, I was like just building up the anger, building up. And the, the slick little mouth of my first daughter that I have, she started saying things. And I said, please don't go there. Not, not, not today. Don't go there. But I kept on going. So I got to where the anger, I got so angry and the rage inside of me. And all this time I'm saying, God, please, I just, I'm trying to stay humble. I'm even praying for these people that wrecked my car because I say maybe they're just scared. Maybe they will come forward. I'm, I'm praying for them as well. And I'm keeping humble because this is what I want to do. You know, keep on that journey with God and keep my, my life focused. But the rage, it, it getting there and I just, they, I, Popped and I, I went off and I told my kids, stop the car. And they kept talking, Mom, blah, blah, blah. and I said, stop the car. And they said, I'll stop the car when we get to Walmart. And to the, the, I went up to the highest of my voice and I yelled, stop the car. I opened the door with the car moving. And my daughter had to suddenly stop the car and say, Ma, I was so angry. It, it took over me. It took over me with everything in life that I was just going through for the week. And I got a car and said, I'm done. I'm just going home and I'm done. And then I, I started thinking, well, this is my grandson's birthday party. I don't want to disappoint him. So I, I, I ended up catching a ride with my sons. I went there, had a good time. On my way home now with my sons, I, I, I'm in the back of the car at the rage and the anger inside of me. And I'm like, oh God, I don't want to lie. 
I'm so angry. I'm so mad. I'm trying. I'm really trying to stay humble. I'm really trying to be patient. But I'm so angry. I got home, got in my bed. I turned the TV on and started going through the channels. And then I hear a simple voice listen to music. And as I went to listen to music, the first song that came on was CC Whining, Believe For It, which was the song that I got baptized to. And the moment that that song came on, and it took me back to that day. Mm. Sisters and brothers, believe me when I say, God is so real. As I start listening to that song, that anger was mm. God. It was God. I mm. was right back to that day I felt when I get baptized and get repented and accept the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. I went right back there. And I'm just sitting here and I'm just praising and crying. And I just felt a smooth wind on my hand that had the hairs stand up on my hand. I mean, it, it, it was such a good feeling that I was back to myself. And I know now, I, even though I'm going through my trials and tribulations, he is there. And he do help you through it. So please, I'm telling you people, give God a try in your life. You will never regret it. Yeah. Never. I just wanted to let you all know because everybody out here goes through it. He's there yeah. no matter what. What you think he's not, he's right there. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is listen for his voice and obey. And he's going to get you exactly where you need to be right back on track and the journey that you need to be going on. He's going to handle your battles. Just keep focus on me. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Monica, for that testimony. That that really, I don't know about the rest of the team, but that really, really blessed me to hear that how the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls him the restrainer. And he truly is a restrainer. Hmm. You know, not not just for the enemy, because that's his that's his, that's the biggest part of his restraining, because he's restraining evil. Imagine how evil this world is already. Imagine what he holding back. Mm. You know, I mean, the world seems so overwhelmingly wicked now. Imagine if he wasn't there restraining how much more wicked this world really would have been. Mm. You know, so the man, when the Holy Spirit restrain you, Miss Son. I remember there was a, 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 a huge chunk of my life where I would be, I have been so frustrated because, and I didn't understand why, but now I understand why, because I knew it was the Holy Spirit restraining me for years. I used to be so upset that with myself, because I, I didn't see the correlation that it was the spirit of God. I used to be so upset with myself and, and would even deride myself. Because there were times where I felt like I couldn't bust off on people the way I want to. I couldn't show my tail the way I want to. When people when people tried me, mm -hmm. I couldn't respond the way I wanted to. I would always feel that like something like something pulling me back or keeping me quiet, and it was frustrating for me. For for years, when I tell you years, years, and I could not understand. I used to calm myself, girl, you're nothing but a punk, you know? And then later I'd be, I, I, I should have said this, and I should have said this, and I should have said this. And at the moment when it happened, I could feel what I want to say, and I know what I want to say was not nice, but I couldn't get it out to say it like something re always was restraining me and restraining me and now looking back at it I knew it was the spirit of God because he saw my purpose you know what I mean mm -hmm. 
And he saw his end of my purpose, what he was going to use me for. So he was restraining me and keeping me from allowing, allowing my spirit to be opened up to allow darkness to come in and end up pushing back my progress in him because then he would have had to deal with the darkness that got in, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was just like the Holy Spirit. He will restrain you. He will remind you of who you is. And that's what he did for you that, uh, um, Monica, mm -hmm. I feel. He, he, he stopped and he reminded you, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is who you are. Yeah. You know, remember me? I'm still there. I still got you. So that, for me, that testimony is just, just so perfect. It's just a reminder to me myself, you know, about the faithfulness of God. He is truly so very, very, very faithful. So very faithful. Or when you feel like you want to pop off on people and tell them about themselves and put them straight and let them know who they think they're dealing with. You don't know who you're messing with. All that kind of thing we don't want to, you know, and we feel all, justified. All flesh. Because, all flesh. All, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100 well, Oh, don't it make the flesh feel good, though? In that moment. In that, yeah. yes. In that moment, you think you feel good. Then the spirit of God start working in you in the nighttime. Like, oh, no, I got to go repent and say sorry to someone. Exactly. And that's exactly what I had to do. Because after I had calmed down and everything, he said, now take up your phone, text your daughter good night, and tell her you love her. And I did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And she texted me back. She said, love you too, man. Good night. I did it. Yep. Mm -hmm. The Bible said we could be angry. But don't oh, sin. That's right. right. Ephesians four twenty six. Yeah, be yep. angry, but sin not. But a lot of times when we get angry because we stewing on it and we letting it boil up and we letting it bubble and rather than praying on it, we allowing it. We we we're like focusing on the problem and letting it magnify and the enemy just using it to like you know mm -hmm. take it to a whole nother level. It's not just anger anymore. Now you now you just boiling and and. and enraged mm -hmm. you know yeah. so now you've gone from just being angry to no i'm about to sin because somebody getting cussed out today yeah <laughs> you know oh yeah i, I feel it's... like i in the movies jumping out the car moving car <laughs> okay <laughs> jesus <laughs> kicked the wheel <laughs> the angry i said wow i'm really angry <laughs> lord <laughs> of mercy devil got you about to kill yourself for the Man. anger wow Jesus. That's crazy. That's crazy. Don't, 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 don't let it take you there no more, Monica. Mm -hmm. Make up in your mind that you gonna stay in control of you. Period. No matter what it takes. No matter it's what like it takes. It's like you away for one little weak spot. And the minute he get a weak spot, he get oh, in, yeah. he gonna try you, my son. Oh yeah, need to try you. Yeah, because you know the Bible says one of the fruit of the spirit is self control. Mm. Self control. So garner that fruit. Garner that fruit of the spirit. Self control. Mm. Self control. Alabaster box: the unveiling, experiencing the supernatural realms of God. Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your territory and purpose in God. Soul Food Devotionals. Nourishment for the heart. Where Angels Tread. The Unseen Realms of God. Available wherever books are sold.
Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. God, I tell you, man, the things we do when we lose control of ourselves and then we have to put our tail between our legs and go back and, you know, it's so much easier just not to do it in the beginning, to just cut it off at the path than to have to turn around and do uh, collateral damage repair. Man, that damage repair ain't no joke. A damage repair. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't repair the damage because you've mm. you've inflicted um, hurt or pain in someone else's spirit. You know you can't you can't undo certain things. Yes, you yeah, you can't undo certain things. So saying sorry ain't gonna undo it. You know, but at the mm. moment it feels good to release that pressure. But you re number one, you're releasing it on the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they had nothing to do with what caused your anger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We always direct our anger at the innocent bystanders. And that's not good. That's not good. The originator of the anger, 50-60% of the time, don't receive your anger for what they did is always always the innocent ones mm -hmm. always the innocent ones you know so you you have to to learn to let the holy spirit guide you and teach you and show you and it's a process lord knows it's a process mm -hmm. it is a process you've lived your entire life catering to your flesh that's all you know you in automatic with that that's mm. a, you are you you driving in automatic with that because you've done it all your life, you know. And now too, you don't, you can't turn on a dime. You cannot turn on a dime. But when you when you what you can do is purpose within yourself to slowly turn that train around. Situation, but and trust me, the devil gonna bring some situations. In your path. Oh, this is what you think you're going to do. Well, let me bring you some situations. And you might fall three, four times. But the Bible said, you know, what this is a scripture? Seven times a man fall. What's the scripture? Oh, my goodness. I think it's fall seven times and you get back up. Yeah, something like that. Is it Psalms? Uh, yeah, somebody that. friendly for me that you wow. know a man would fall seven times, but you gotta keep getting up. That's mm -hmm. Proverbs 24 16 through 18. Read it. Oh, I didn't get into it yet. I just go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Proverbs 24 16 to 18. Proverbs. But you got to keep going, my son. You got to keep getting up and you got to keep dusting yourself up. You got to keep, you know, not only not only repenting to God, but consistently get it right with the person you offended. You know, and a lot of people only do one half of the repairing of the bridge, the one between them and God. And they think they and they think they good. Well, I made it right with God, but they, but you didn't make it right with the person that you offended, that you hurt. You know, yeah. especially especially when the person is a child. Oh, we we definitely feel we don't need to do it. I ain't apologizing. That's my child. Me, me, why he think that 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 I don't make mistakes, but you do make mistakes. Mm. Mm. And uh, who better to see that you're human and that you do make mistakes 
than your children who is in the process of making a whole bunch of mistakes that they can glean from the fact that you know what mommy 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 and daddy human they make mistakes so when i make mistakes i don't feel so bad you know apologize to your child apologize to your children you hurt them you offended them they're, they're human beings too just because they're your children don't mean they, they're just as human as your co-worker they know less human just because you gave birth to them apologize to your children sit your children down and explain things to them Absolutely. you know tell them you was wrong i'm so sorry i was wrong you know please forgive me you know and don't think that because you said please forgive me that everything okay mm -hmm. you may have planted a seed that went deeper than you realize correct uh -huh. so you will have to do some digging up Mm -hmm. Don't just think saying that one thing and you walk away and everything good. No, you might have to do some digging up. I've had situations where I've had to go to my kids and I've had to keep going to that spot in that child and continue digging in it, digging in that soil. Because I sense that it went, it, it went deep. You know, it wasn't just a surface scratch. It wasn't just a, a you know, a scrape. Mm -hmm. I know it went deep. So I have, I have gone back to that child over and over again and not keep bringing up the situation. But what I would do is I would give that child extra attention, extra love, kind of reinforce my love for that child more and more and kind of kind of shore up the breach for that child i ain't gonna keep bringing up the actual incident because it's just like opening up a wound mm -hmm. but i go to that child and I, and I and i give that child extra attention extra love extra motivation extra encouragement you know think like let let them cuddle with you in bed and let them let them cook with you or let them go out in the garden with you or take them shopping with you to build that relational piece that got broken and children are so resilient when you do that with a child a child heals so quick because you spent that extra time with that child to reinforce and reassure that little spirit that my mommy do love me. My daddy do love me. They just made a mistake. And a child able to move on quicker than an adult would. The adult would still be looking at you side-eyed. Yeah, uh-huh. But the child will move on. You know what the Bible say? The kingdom of heaven is made of such as these. Because children are so resilient and they forgive quick. Once they are reassured, their trust in you, their, their belief in you, their faith in you is, 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 is shored up real quick. So the kingdom of God is like, is, is like, you know, the heart of a child. You know, so you, you, do, you do what you got to do. You do what you have to do. You found this series? Yeah. It's Proverbs um, 24, 16. For though the righteous fall seven uh, times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Okay. So you're going to fall. And, it, <laughs> and you're going to fall a lot. But you got to keep rising. You got to keep rising. You got to keep rising. You got to keep doing it. You got to keep Whatever it is that you need to do to make it right, the Holy Spirit will direct you on exactly what you need to do because each person is different. Each one of your children is different. He knows exactly what each child needs. And allow him to, to guide you and show you what that child is going to need. You know? And just follow the Holy Spirit and do what needs to be done for that child, do what needs to be done, you know, for the person that you've hurt or you've offended, 
you know, and get it right. Especially Monica in your situation where your kids watching you right now, you know. Mm -hmm. All four of them watching you. Mm -hmm. All four of them watching you. Mm -hmm. so I love that because earlier this week too, because how 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 I was so calm and how the situation happened where um my daughter works third shift. So when they came to drop out of the car, it was like nighttime. So what my daughter did was like, she saw the car up on top of the thing, but she, she, she does give her the money because it was a woman and she just went back inside to go lay down because she had to get up in a couple of hours to go to work. So she really didn't notice the car until the morning when she was coming home from work. Mm -hmm. She was like, what in the world? So she called my other daughter Kiki, I say, oh God, Kiki, he got to come and FaceTime with me because I got to call mommy and I know mommy going to go out for me and I don't want to hear it. Oh God, now I got to tell mommy these people match up for a car. So I went here home with my own little spiritual wall and stuff. I see them called Carl True. So when she called True, Kiki said, mommy, look at your car. So I look at because I wasn't looking at them. I was just listening to them. So I look at it. And then when I see the car, I say, what happened? And I keep going and say, this is how they did, 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 did the car, mommy. I, I, I. And she was stuttering. So I know she, she, she was, she know her mother. Mm -hmm. So I just simply just kept quiet. So I said, okay, all right. And I was humble. I'll, I, I could say, and tell about the middle of the week, Wednesday is when it started changing up. But I was so humble. And Aldi was saying, well, mommy, you, you dealing with this so different. You so humble. I say, yep. Mm. Patience. <laughs> the journey mm -hmm. that I am. They, they, they are looking at me. They're looking at everything I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. So I kind of really felt bad on Friday when I just let the weakness take over. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's what I had to. I just had to start talking to God, and I say, "Oh my God, God, like I, I, I'm so angry. Like I, 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 I didn't like the feeling because it, it was such a heavy, heavy burden feeling on my chest. Like I just wanted. It, it was so heavy. Oh, it was the worst. Really it was the worst. Mean. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Oh, you see? Mm -hmm. I said we're human. I said, but at the end, she did the right thing by apologizing. You know, mm -hmm. making it right. So then she's able to see, like, oh, okay, so you know, mommy saw mm -hmm. she was wrong. We're human. The old me, I was a fire cracker. I would have been going from last week Saturday to this Saturday. I would have been going. Mm -hmm. I'm going and going and going and going and going and going until I stress myself out. Mm -hmm. I thank God, God, just take that person away from me. Mm -hmm. Because I like, I, I like how peaceful I was and humble. And I'm just waiting for God to make the move. And I feel good about it because I trust God. Amen. I trust it. Amen. You know what I mean? So I know he got me. Right. Right. And you see, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times what seems like chaos is actually God about to bless you. Mm -hmm. Yet it looks like chaos. It looks like our wall. It's being turned upside down. It looks like, you know, it's out of control. So we get angry. We get frustrated because we don't, we don't see what God's doing. We do not see what God is doing. But we got to, uh, like I said, we, we, the Holy Spirit take us from journey to journey. From journey to journey, he takes us and he builds us slowly. Slowly builds us, start, start reinforcing us and start making us stronger and stronger in situations. He allowed the enemy to come with things. Because the enemy going to come 
whether you're serving God or not. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that. Just because you ain't serving God don't mean the enemy ain't coming at you. He, com he coming at you, even for those who serving him. He coming. He ain't loyal to nobody. He ain't loyal. He has no loyalty. There's no loyalty among thieves. The, don't, the demons ain't loyal to each other. They'll cut each other's throat in a minute at blink. There's no loyalty in that camp at all. So the enemy, he, he hitting those who serve God. He hitting those who don't serve God. He hitting you simply because you're human and you're loved of God. That's the only requirement he needs. He coming at you. He coming at you. So it ain't just this, it ain't the save alone. He coming at he coming at he coming at all of us. Every last one of us. You know. So but the Holy Spirit just builds on these things. He builds on these things and he strengthens you. He reinforces you. But he also for me, for me, this is just me thinking. For me, a lot of the times he, the Lord allows certain things to happen so that we can learn how our enemy moves because you can't get victory if you don't know the strategic plans of the enemy if you don't learn it just something as simple as football when you when one team is going to um, play against another what do you think that coach do he show his team films of the other team playing huh. And they sit down there and that coach points out certain strength in that other team. And he and he strategize who to put to cover who before they play that team. So the Holy Spirit does too. Mm -hmm. He allows us to see the strength and the weakness of our enemy. So when we go in warfare prayer, when we go in our prayer closet, we know and are familiar with the moves of the enemy. So we know how to come against them in prayer. What the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. And how can you ask if you ain't learned? You know, you can't, no military on the earth goes against another nation without learning about that nation and about that nation's military, how weak it is, how strong it is before they go against them. No nation does that. Go against another nation blind. No, and that's, that's in the human way of doing things. Think on spiritually. Think on spiritually. The Holy Spirit knows he's a spirit. They're spirits. He's a spirit. He's the ultimate spirit. He knows what they're going to do before they even know what they're going to do. Mm. God knows everything. And he wants to be able to teach us what he said. He made a way of escape. Not just in the natural, but also when it comes to spiritual things. He already made a way of escape because he's a spirit. He, he knows the beginning from the end of everything created, not just men. He knows the beginning and the end of everything every spiritual being he created plus every human being he created. He knows the beginning and the end. He knows, the Bible says he knows you're sitting down and you're getting up. He knows you're lying down. He knows you're getting up. He knows your thought from afar. And he just, we, when we read these verses, we think he means only human beings. He talking about being spirit that he created. He knows he knows when I'm being laid down or when I'm being get up. He knows every thought of every invisible being from afar off before that thought even come into the mind of that spiritual being. God, I already know. Reset. Women's Retreat. Reset and set free. Hosted by Linda Casimir.
So he can't get, he can't catch God off guard. It, it's impossible. No demon could catch the Lord off guard. He knows their thoughts from afar off. And just our thoughts, he knows from afar off. And if he knows their thoughts from afar off, and he know before they even know that they're going to try to come against you, you think God didn't see that what going to happen to your car? Okay. He saw that from be, 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 beginning of time that that was going to happen to your car. But then suppose God say, okay, they're going to mess up her car, but guess what? You know what I'm going to do? Because she's going to stay strong and humble herself and she's going to stay faithful to me, I'm going to bless her with a brand new car. Just because I'm God. You never know. Exactly. Just because I am God. There's nothing I cannot do. You know, there's nothing hidden from him. You know, so yeah. Stay, Monica. You're on the right track. Keep your peace. Keep your oh. peace. He said he keeps you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Mm -hmm. When you keep your mind on him, you 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 keep that peace. Because he's perfect peace. He's perfect oh. peace. So that's why he had to take your mind and put your mind back on him. Oh. He had How to you put your mind back on him. Huh? How you been getting around all week? Um, I'm like um, Kenry or um, Kenita, just about getting around, and then my days off is like two days off together. So it, it kind of worked out fine, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I say, even though I ain't had a car, God still had me okay. away for me through to the get, week. Yeah. So that's why I was still at humble and at peace. I say because you still had away. Everybody volunteered. I yeah. pick you, I'll pick you up and say, why no problem? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, why no problem? And you know what, Monica? To touch others' lives. I would, son, you take the words out of my mouth. That's you take the words out of my mouth. Exactly. And that's why I was so angry with myself when I messed up on Friday night. I was so angry because the people them who God put in my life to help me you know, making sure the week I snapped at them because not only did I snap at Kenita, I snapped at Kenny. Right. So after I had, you know, calmed down and God pulled me back to where I needed to be, he was the first person and I went and apologized to him. You know what I mean? And I say, you know, I'm on my walk and I am mm -hmm. changing, you know what I mean? So I apologize for snapping at you. Right. And I was like, I know, I understand. I good. Right, right, yeah. right. That's, that's real maturity right there. Yes. You know, another thing too, you just finished praying about um about the easy or a way to completely cut ties with the situation you were dealing with. Mm -hmm. Bye bye car, bye bye situation. At least for now. Mm -hmm. you know okay, say I mean? that again, son. I didn't get it. I said she just finished the last few weeks. She was talking to us about a situation she was dealing with, with the drive home. He, so bye bye car. That situation is dead. It's not even a possibility right now because the car was the catalyst to to the issue. So with the oh, car gone now, gotcha. with the car gone for now, then there's not even an option for to get boxed into that situation, even if it was where you there was no other choice somebody really needed to ride home and you you know you trying to be good and do it now that's, oh that's yeah i get it i get you i get you i get you yeah you're right you're right you're right so remember it's something you asked it could be something you asked for but you just sometimes you don't like the way he gives the answer <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> That's so true. That's a good way of saying it, son. That's a good way of saying it. When God moves, he move, he touch, he touch every need. He does not move one dimensional like man. When man move, we hit one dimension. God I hit all of them one, with one move. God hit all the dimensions one time. All of it. To the point where sometimes we don't even catch it till later. 
Oh, then we start connecting the dots. You know, like you just said, Lionel. Oh, I never thought of that, but that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. You know, because yeah, it, it's been bugging you for weeks now, it's been eating you up for weeks and and throwing you off for weeks, and now you got the chance to have something else to worry about. Huh. And two, you had the opportunity to spend time alone, quality time. With Kenry, quality time with your kids, you know, uh -huh. quality time to for them to you'd be amazed how without speaking, you could minister to other people. Without saying a word. Huh. You said preach the word. It's but only, like yeah. Only when absolutely necessary. Speak. Because people, people hear what you do more than what you say, you know. Uh -huh. People hear how you act and how you react louder than the words that you say. You know? So, who knows Who knows what God was doing in that interval? There was those personal time you were spending with the different family members that were driving you to work. Uh -huh. You know? Just, just the, just the, the, uh, just the thought that you housing the spirit of God in you now, and there in the vicinity of Him, with you sitting in their car, that could be the only thing He needed for you to do. To be in the vicinity of them. Hmm. To do what he needs to do in the spirit realm. You know, to start affecting change for them. Hmm. Without you even speaking one word. That is so awesome. Hmm. He is so amazing. And then you're going to start to see fruits coming forth with your kids. All of a sudden, you start seeing changes in your kids, you know, because mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know what I'm trying to win. You don't. We don't know. Like when, when even had tell us that Saucy that listened to the to the broadcast, I didn't know that. Mm. Saucy never said he listens, but he listens. He listens. The Holy Spirit have him have it had had him listening. To the broadcast. I had no idea when the old nephew was listening to the broadcast, but he, he was listening. Hmm. You know, you don't know you don't know how God moving on your kids. You don't know how God moving on your kids and your grandkids. You know, as for hmm. me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. You choose this day who you gonna serve, but as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We gonna serve the Lord. Make that my make that make that up in your spirit. You don't have to hit hit them over the head with the biggest Bible you could find to affect that scripture. You just have to live it out in front of them. That's it. Hmm. Just live it out. Live it out in front of your kids. Live it out in front of your spouse. The Bible says a, 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 a righteous woman will save her whole house. And then because she hit it over the head, it's because she saved, the spirit of God is in her, and she's in the house, she's dwelling among them. And it affects their spiritual change. They start to change. Yes, yeah, some of them is hard nuts to crack. Yes. And it takes a minute. It may take months. It may take years. But they're not, they're not done start cracking. You just ain't seeing the crack. Oh. It might be a hairline fracture. You can't see it. But the spirit of God affecting it. Just believe God and know that God is God. Know that God is God. You know. There's a there's a lot of reasons behind this car situation with you, Monica. There's a lot of reasons behind it. God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He is an amazing, amazing God. Can I just say something? 
Of course. Because the situation could have gone differently with, as far as Auntie Monica, you know, asking, asking them to, for, to forgive her after she realized she messed up. Uh-huh. And I feel a lot of people, I should say a lot of us, I'm include myself, a lot of us sometimes when we do mess up, we we feel the Holy Spirit telling us or tugging at our heart to go back and make things right with a person, but we choose not to. Out mm-hmm. of pure pride, pride and embarrassment and flesh. Yeah. And you choose not to go back and you hold, oh, with time, they're going to forget about it. That's our ain't nothing big and trying to downplay it, not realizing the magnitude of what you may have possibly done, even with a simple word or a simple action. And now the enemy gets to step in because you just open up a, a whole new door for him. Because now you went from just simply messing up to now you're in disobedience because the Holy Spirit told you to go and make things right and you're choosing not to. Right. So then now you're opening up a whole different kind of worms, walking into disobedience with that. And it's like, we have to remember to put aside our fleshly desires and our pride and humble ourselves and be obedient to God. Because at the end of the day, we're not living for ourselves. Amen. Amen. It it just it is um it may it just amazed me how how I don't know if I have the right to say it, and God forgive me if I'm wrong to me as a human, how humble and obedient God is to us for mm. all that we do do. Mm. Yeah. You, you understand? I just say, and how can't I be the same way? Mm-hmm. How could I not be the same way? It just, I'm like, and I, I just want to say, I just said, God, I just, and when I prayed, I said, God, I thank you so much for your humbleness towards me and your obedience towards me because he don't give up on us. Mm-hmm. He don't leave you. That's obedience right there. That's grace. Yeah. That's, that's, like, that's like grace. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. How can you not love? How can you not? I just say, I said, people might think I'm crazy. I just say, I have such a crush on God. I have such a crush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so in love with God. The Bible says all four husband, so hey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You should have because a question on him. You should love him. How he just, from one song alone, that whole anger and fire will shoot. Yep. God. Soul Food, a daily devotional available wherever books are sold. Iron sharpens iron. A Caribbean twist to talk shows. Reset. Women's Retreat. A time to relax and connect with God. Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. Shut it down. Wow. I'm telling you, you should just it's it's a big thing, the fact that you humble yourself and, and went back and and did what the Holy Spirit told you to do. Because I tell you, Auntie, a lot of people don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That takes that takes spiritual maturity and the spirit of God. So that says a lot about your walk. Mm-hmm. Also, think about it. If the anger could go away that quick, what was it really? I mean, how important was it if it could just disappear that quick? Exactly. Very true. Exactly. It's basically he's saying to me, Monica, you get yourself upset about a tough situation. You know I got you. Be Amen. patient. Be humble. 
trust me. I yeah. say, I don't trust you. Trust me. Materialistic things ain't nothing to me. I am God. Amen. Mm. I let her humble myself and listen and obey and ask for forgiveness. But I, I keep saying, I don't care how much time I fall, I stumble, I slip. I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to keep coming. I said, because this time, God and Monica ain't going back for nothing. Mm -hmm. I am not going back. Amen. Mm. I'm not. Ain't it's nothing. such a wonderful feeling. Yes. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, and I want, I just, I'm hungry for more. Mm. I want to see what God could do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to help. I help. I want to help save souls. I want people to know it's okay if you slip up. It's okay. He's still there. Mm -hmm. He ain't going away. He ain't like us human. He's still right there. Get on back up. Get up, honey. It's all right. He gonna help you too. He help pick you up, brush you off, and say, "Let's mm -hmm. go." Amen. Like the prodigal, the prodigal son. We put a robe on him. Royalty, yeah, you might, you might be a hot mess, but ready the minute you're ready to come back, he ready to put that royalty right back on you. Come on, let's yep. go, let's get cleaned up. Yeah, uh -huh. put that ring on his finger, he reinstated yep. him. Mm -hmm. he, did, he, yep. did, he didn't require him to start from the bottom again and walk no, his way he, up. He wanted to be a slave, you right? My son, how am I gonna make you a slave? You're my son. It's I'm glad that, you came back home. Right, because that's okay. man. That's man way of thinking. Mm -hmm. so I have to. Yep. I have to start from the bottom again. I got to prove myself. The, no, God is saying no. You don't have to prove yourself. It's, mm. I'm God. Exactly. There's no limit to my knowing you. You don't have to prove yourself. I am your God. I know your thoughts from afar off. I know what you gonna think before you think it. I go see in your heart. You don't have to walk your way up to nothing. He put a ring right back on his finger. Mm. Who but God could do? Who but God? For real. We serve an amazing, amazing, amazing God. Such a patient, loving, forgiving, compassionate God. <laughs> There is no the the depth the deepness of God who could reach it? Mm. Who? Mm. So amazing. So amazing. James chapter James chapter four. Hold on, y'all. James chapter four says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Uh -huh. you, des you desire, but do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Huh. So when we think we're praying and we don't get what we're praying for, we get upset. We don't even factor in the fact that the reason we're asking for it is for a selfish motive. It's a selfish motive. If we be honest, if we be, if we be brutally honest, a lot of things we're praying for is with selfish motives. It ain't to be a blessing to somebody else. That's the last thing on our agenda. That's the last thing. It's with selfish motives. God is not going to answer selfish prayers. He will never answer selfish prayers. Ever. You know, but when you when you go to God and you pray and you're like, Lord, 
I want to be able to do whatever it takes to win a soul, to encourage, encourage somebody, to lift somebody heart up, to, to be a blessing to somebody. Them kind of prayers God answer with a quickness. Because that's when you sound in more like him. That's when the, the scripture that says, when you ask, believing he will give you the desire of your heart that's what a scripture means when he see that you got his heart he's gonna give you the, he gonna give you what you're asking for in prayer because you have his heart and his heart is to be a blessing to all his children not just you you know and you're four and no more. You know, you want to be more and more like Christ. You want to exemplify Jesus Christ. You want to be seen as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Or how are you playing that out in your life? In the things you do, the way you react to people, or the things you say, the way you treat people, the way you see people. In your, in your heart, how you really see people. You're looking down your nose at people because their skin color is different from yours. They, they have less money from yours. They li they're living in a, a, a lower income neighborhood than yours. Their job is, is lower than yours. You you big CEO and they're cleaning the, the toilet. So you're looking down your nose at them. But then you're going in your prayer closet and truly and honestly with all your soul, expecting God to give you what you're praying for. Can we can we rightfully say that he would never answer a selfish prayer? Because if we if we if we're being realistic, some of the prayers that we do pray that are important to us may not be something that's going to like benefit others, but it might benefit you or it might benefit your family. You know, for example, I'm gonna use Auntie Monica with the car. Like you could like praying for the car to get to and from work. That's not that's not to say that oh the car is gonna be used to for the body of Christ. It's right to get right. to and from work. Right. No, that's not the kind of prayers I'm talking about. I'm talking about selfish prayers. That's not a selfish prayer. Okay. That's not a selfish prayer. When you have a need, that's not a selfish prayer. Okay. Are you talking about selfish prayer? You ain't praying for a car to get to and from work. You praying for a Lexus or Benz. That's the car you want. Because you see your, your, your heart is so puffed up. You want to show off that you driving a Lexus or you driving a BMW. You driving a, you praying for a car, but you have selfish motives in your heart. You know? As long as there's a selfish motive in your prayer, God's not going to answer that prayer. I'm sorry. I, I don't see it that way, though. Why? I feel like this is how I, this is how I feel. Like I feel like we're God's kids. Why, why shouldn't we want the best? Is God not able to? Oh, he's able to give you the it's best. Not, it's, it's not like, it's, I'm not, it's not to say like, um, oh, you only, because that's an assumption to think that if somebody print asks God for a specific type of car, because that's what their heart desire. No, that's not what I'm saying. You're not getting, you're not getting what I'm saying. You're not getting what I'm but saying. I, okay, that's always coming across. Right. Yeah. What I'm saying is, okay, you're praying for a Bentley because in your heart you want to show off. Okay. You ain't you ain't praying for a Bentley. You ain't asking God to 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 give you a Bentley so that you could be a blessing to other people and stuff. In your heart, you pray for the Bentley because of a selfish motive. Because you want to prove something to somebody or whatever your whatever the selfish motive is. Or you could just want a nice vehicle. Yeah, but that's not a selfish motive. You're not you're not doing it for a selfish motive. Okay, so it's not necessarily that they're asking because they're asking for a name brand or because they're asking for something. No, not quality. because they're asking for a particular name brand. No, because okay, you have a that's, that's... selfish motive for it. Okay. That's what I mean to clarify. Apologize if, if that was confusing. 
I'm not saying you can't pray for a particular brand of car. I'm saying when you have a selfish motive for the right. prayer, and even if it ain't a brand of car, whatever it is you're praying for, you could be praying for a stick of gum. But if in your heart you have a selfish motive for that gum, for asking for that gum, God is not going to answer that prayer because he's seen your heart and he's seen the selfishness in your heart for that prayer. Not saying that God ain't going to give you the best. Yes. Look at Solomon. Solomon was the richest and smartest, you know. And he prayed and asked God for, for the wisdom to rule his people. So he prayed a prayer. Some people, some rulers would have, would have asked for that same thing. But in their heart, their motive would have been selfish. Solomon's motive was not selfish. Mm -hmm. He wanted to rule God, rule God people correctly according to God. And God mm -hmm. saw that in his heart. So God answered his prayer. Got it. Mm -hmm. But some other leader would have had a selfish motive to rule over the people and, and dominate them or whatever. It's the same prayer. Same words. Mm -hmm. But God seen the content of his heart and he seen it, it's selfish. So God don't answer selfish prayers. That's the difference. That's the difference. So it ain't, it ain't what you're praying for is the content of your heart while oh, you're okay. praying. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Is that clearer? Yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. So no, we got that clear. So we, we got to we got to be careful. Like the Bible say, you ask that you ask not because you, you you have not because you ask not. And you ask when you do ask, you ask selfishly. You know, the Bible didn't say not to ask. The Bible say, come pray, supplicate. Cry out. Let God know your need. Yes, you have a need. Come to God with your need. And pray. Mm -hmm. And he see in your heart that you have a need for this item or this whatever it is you, you need. And you're not, you, you don't, you know, you truly, truly just have a need for it. Or you want to be a blessing to somebody. You know, Lord, if, like some people will say, Lord, if you, if you allow me to wait in the lottery, I could help so many people. And God see that person's heart is for real. And they really would do that. God, my blessing with the lottery. Because he's seen their heart. And he's seen this person really going to do exactly what he's saying he would do with this money. And he let you um, get an inheritance or whatever, whatever is his choice for you. But he looks at the heart. Well, ain't that what the Bible says? Man, look at the mm -hmm. outward appearance. God, mm -hmm. look at the heart. Okay. God looks at the heart. Yes. Yes. That's why you see certain things <sighs> happening in certain people's life. And you're like, why that happening to him? He's such a nice man. He never seemed to be able. You notice every serial killer when you talk to their neighbors, the first thing they say is, he was such a nice, quiet person. I would have never thought he would have done this. He was so friendly. Because man looks at the outward appearance. Uh-huh. Oh, it's in the divorce court, so ram jam. Because man look at the outward appearance. Hmm. We believe we believe a six four nine. Hmm. Until you put the ring on and you say your I do's and you lock up in the in, in, in the marriage house. Then you want to know what in the wall I marry. The true person come out and you you like totally shock. I can't believe this is the same person that you dated. Because you were looking at the outward appearance. But God was seeing he had. And God was probably coming to you and telling you he's not it. But you ignored, you ignored that. Because you prefer to look at what the man was showing you. Instead of what God was showing you. But I digress. Oh. I digress. So, man of God, one step at a time, honey, in this walk. This walk is, is an amazing thing. Oh. It's an amazing thing. So, like I said, your kids, your kids are watching you. Henry watching you. 
and they, they, they ain't watching you in a negative watching you. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It ain't a negative to, to see. Let me see, see. Let me see how long it will take her to fall kind of way. That some people uh -huh. do. You know, they watching uh -huh. you to see if this, this God is, is, you know, really someone that I could trust, someone that I could really stretch forth my hand and say, okay, God. Okay, God. You know? Uh-huh. No, God is good. Claim your whole house. Claim your whole house. Claim every generation of your children and grandchildren. Claim every last one of them for the Lord. All of them. Every night when you proclaim all of them. Them and the earth. Them who ain't on the earth yet. Them who is about who to come on the earth. 50, 60, 70, 100 years from now. If the Lord tarries. Claim all of them for Jesus Christ. Every one of them. And their spouses. For Jesus Christ. You know. But God is awesome. God is awesome. Yes, he is. But we keep us abreast of that of this saga. Because we're expecting to have a good end. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Seriously. I surely will. We expecting you and expecting a good end? Yes, and you know, the first thing I can say, and when is a good end, when I even know it's a good end, the first thing I can say when I come on is, look what God have done. And yeah. then I can tell you what happened. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we are, we are all expecting a very good end to this, to this saga. A very good end. He's awesome. He is awesome. He's awesome. I give him praise forever. Yep. Father, we give you glory. Yep. We, we magnify you tonight, Lord. We thank you for you alone are worthy. You alone are God. Spirit of the Lord, have your way in us. Have your way through us. Pour out the oil of your Holy Spirit upon our children and grandchildren. Help us to be that light that salt of the earth that you said that we are for salt not only heals salt flavors make things palatable make things more seasoned and make things more enjoyable and pleasurable let us truly be salt and let us truly be light for others to see your greatness, to see your glorious power and presence through our lives, Lord. We are your children. We are your servants. Have your way in all of us. We thank you for Iron Shopping's Iron, Father. For every Saturday night that we come together just to talk about you, just to go over the word of our God. And for the ability, Lord God, that through your Holy Spirit, you send this out to all the world. We are in awe of just that. How amazing is our God to do this. We lift up the subscribers. We lift up every viewer, Lord. Whether they subscribe or not. The fact that they keep coming back over and over and over. You have more than 52% of them coming back every week to view and they may not subscribe we don't care about that we just happy that they come back every week to hear more about this God that we talk about they're not coming back for us they're coming back for you because they're hungry to know who this God is that these Caribbean people come on every Saturday night talking about let them hear things they've never heard. Let their understanding be open. Let their heart hunger and thirst after righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for another wonderful opportunity to bring forth your word on the earth. May the word of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts 
be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. May the Lord bless you and keep you, viewers and subscribers. And may the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you his peace this coming week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for popping in one more time with us as we talk about our Savior, our Lord, and our God, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being faithful, my team. Thank you for your faithfulness, each and every one of you. I love y'all. But even more so, God loves you. And yes. God has you all yes. in the palm of his hand. He said, I've engraved your name on the palm of my hand. <sighs> he didn't tattoo it. He engraved it on the palm of his hand. He cannot forget you. He cannot forget you. So until we come back together next week for another episode of I am yes, shopping Zion. <laughs> amen, amen. Adi, um, team, go ahead and say good night to your viewing audience, and we were going to call it a night tonight. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed week. Good night. Good night oh, go ahead. No, that's I was saying. Just good night. <laughs> go ahead, Adi. Good night, everyone. Have a peaceful week. Keep your eyes lifted on Jesus Christ, that he could bring you through whatever you pray for and for whom you're praying for. Mm -hmm. Believe that God has everything in his hand and he's always in control. Amen. Good night. Have a peaceful week and a blessed week. Amen. 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 Are you being called, girl? You're being paged. I know. I know. <laughs> Lana, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay. I'll see you guys. God bless, okay? Good night, okay. everyone. All right. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love y'all. Love you too. Lo oh. <laughs>